Take any Raw show from 98, 99 and put it in 2019. Your network will get cut off the air. It's a very like attitude era background here. What do you yeah, think? It's very attitude era. I'm <laughs> waiting for somebody to come down the steps with a steel chair or, yeah. or a garbage bag, you know, can and hit me over the top of the head. <laughs> So I keep looking on my shoulder. Right. Uh, well, we're actually at a casino right now, so this is like the grungiest looking thing at a casino here. I like it. Well, some of the inside of the casinos are. Never mind. I didn't say that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. They just smell like that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave it alone. How many bookings like this are you taking? This one's obviously Gangrel's, uh, you know, uh, wrestling asylum. How many like this are you taking? Um, I don't take as much as I used to. I might take maybe one a month or so, but most of the time I do a lot of autograph sessions or, or clinics. I don't like to get in the ring that much anymore because I'm old. <laughs> so what are you doing when you're not wrestling? Uh, I have a school out in Las Vegas. It's in conjunction with a uh, few stars of wrestling called the Snake Pit. Um, and I do a lot of training. And then I have a security company out in Vegas. So that's kind of like what gets me through the day. So you have a lot of like A-list clients that you're doing security for? I'm not allowed to speak on that. That means yes. That's exactly what that means. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're in Vegas, uh, is there a chance that you'll be maybe in the audience at Double or Nothing? Uh, ex the funny thing is, weirdly enough, the entire wrestling world is going to Vegas, and I'm leaving Vegas to go to Indiana to do a signing. So oh. I will be the, probably the one wrestler who won't be in Las Vegas for Double or Nothing. Yeah, they'll all be flying in, and you'll be like... I'll be passing yeah. them on the way. They'll be yeah. going west, I'll be going east. It's crazy. When people see you at these types of signings, what's the biggest question that people ask you? Um, what's The Rock like? That's like one of the biggest questions I get all the time. Or, you know, hey, how was Attitude Era? Or what was it like being the nation? So those well, are. Look, I've interviewed The Rock nine times. Uh, uh, he's counting. Yeah, I, of course. I'm, it's The Rock. Of course I'm counting. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you say when people ask you how The Rock is? Um, I say that he's a, a cool ass dude that I got to know before he was famous. Famous er. More famous. Um, <laughs> and. He's one of those guys who will give back to his family and his community. So that's the kind of guy I know. How about the head shaking? Do people ask you about that? I get that all the time, but there's a secret to that. Okay. You remember the movie Friday? Yeah. Remember when Debo knocked a brother out for his bike and Chris Tucker went, you got knocked up. Yeah. Head shake. That's where it came from? Yep, that's where it came from. And a combination of there was a, the side to side came from that and then it was back in the day, there was a, a defensive back for the uh, 49ers. His name is Merton Hanks. Google him. If he intercepted a ball and he was going for the touchdown, he would do a strut like this as he was going into the end zone. So I put those two together, and there's my strut and my head shake. Now, when you started doing that, what was Vince's reaction? Um, ironically, and I tell this story, um, so Rocky and I were we, we watching the movie Friday. It was a su random Sunday. We just threw it in the DVD player. Because we had portable DVD players back in the day that were real expensive. So we put a DVD player, we watched Friday. So the next night, Rocky's wrestling Ken Shamrock. He's wrestling on Raw, and Rocky tosses Ken Shamrock to the floor. And I remember running up to Ken Shamrock going, you got knocked up. So then immediately I said to myself, oh, I just swore on national TV. Vince is going to find me. So the rest of the match is kind of like, oh, damn it, damn it. Right, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. How much money is this going to cost me? So there are two looks Vince gives you when you come back through the curtain. Either he pulls the glasses up, pushes them down, gives you this or he does this and followed by this oh, no. you don't want that one no y you remember being summoned to the principal's office or had dad mad at you sure that's that feeling that goes through your body so i get back to the curtain and i'm like oh my god i'm gonna get fine i'm gonna get fine so i peek back through and vince looks at rocky and goes yeah he looks at me and goes below damn it <laughs> So I immediately start thinking, okay, how am I gonna? I'm gonna tell my fiance how I lost money. How am I, <laughs> this is what I'm thinking in the two foot two. And he, I sit down next to me. He goes, that uh, thing you do with your head. Keep doing it. <laughs> and I went, okay, cool. He didn't <laughs> find me, and I ran away. But that's the first, um, the first time it was on TV, and that was the first time his first thought on it was there was something about it. He liked it. Caught his attention. Catch Vince's attention, you're doing something right. There's some entrances, though, where you're, like, shaking so much, I feel like your head's going to well, fall and, off. And the, it became a parody of itself because now <laughs> I had to overdo it from – I had my pay-per-view head shake. I had my raw head <laughs> shake. You know, I had my house show head shake. So you, you, you just had to put it out there. And, and depending on how excited I was or how the match was or the meaning of the match, you can tell my excitement yeah. level by the way I strut it and – 
and shook the damn head. <laughs> when uh, DX did the parody of yes. The Nation, did you guys have any idea they were going to do that? Um, we had a lot of input and in, because they asked us mannerisms, ideas, stuff like that. And, you know, people, some people found that segment offensive. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. I find it like that segment did more for me than anything because I was doing the head shake and people didn't notice it. And then Road Dog went out there and did a de better D-Lo than I did a D-Lo. So then two segments later when I came out to wrestle, people went, oh, damn, he really does that with his head. And that's when oh. awareness came to me as a performer. And, and, like, my run started right after that. So to me it was – I couldn't be happier with it. Get it. If you're offended, I get it. Well, I just don't think that that segment, they, they wouldn't be able to get away with it now in 2019. Come on, man. What could you get away? <laughs> Take any Raw show from 98, 99 and put it in 2019. Your network would get cut off the air. Yeah. The, the fact that there was blackface, though, did you have a problem with that at the time? I, I didn't at the time. I get it. I understand it. I understand uh, the, the, the heat behind it. And I understand the history of it. Um, I wasn't looking at it as blackface. I was looking at it as entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and as you grow, perspective change, and thoughts and things change. So today, I wouldn't, I would not have okayed that. Today, at the time, I'm just looking to entertain and be part of something. The fact that you were so close with the Rock and the Nation days, do you guys still keep in touch now? Um, we talk from time to time. So it's not like we're not. Look, we're not buddies. I'm not calling him going, "Hey, Rock, I need to be in a movie." But every now and then, we'll touch. <laughs> Maybe you should. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should. I never want to cash in on stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we'll talk from time to time. Uh, how, how much do you speak with Draws after the accident? Um, I, funny, I was just talking to Draws not too long ago. We, we, we text back and forth, and I was just in Philadelphia at autograph signing, and he, and he, uh, he rolled up. So, um, you know, Draws and I have no heat. I don't know what people think that. Draws and I have no heat. We talk, and we're still friends to this day. Yeah, well, it's not like it was your fault. It was, you know, it's an accident. It's not like I went in the locker room and said, hey, tonight I'm going to drop you on your head. Yeah. And lots of people do, unfortunately, get dropped on their head, and they're fine. It, it, yes, it, it was a freak accident. Freak, we sat and watched it together, and neither of us can pinpoint what happened, what went wrong, and why did it end like that. Huh. No, one, Neither of us can do it. So, I mean, it's just one of those things that happened. It's an unfortunate thing that uh, I happened to be in the ring with him, and on that day it happened, and, and it's just a bad situation that, you know, we wish we could have avoided. It. It's something we had done a thousand times before. Mm -hmm. Um just freak night. I watched another interview where you said you hadn't watched it back. So did you watch it back recently? We, we watched it back. I didn't watch it for the longest time. Yeah, okay. And then, because I couldn't bring myself to watch it. Sure. It was just, it was a bad situation. But as once again, as you get older, perspective change. Now I want to look just to improve, to see, make sure that, because as a teacher, I want to make sure I teach someone not to make that mistake. Mm -hmm. And I've looked back at it and I've dissected it and I can't. I can't see what went wrong mm. other than something went wrong. Mm. I, I saw that you, or I know that it really affected you. Yeah. And you were, you know, thinking of quitting wrestling, and it was actually JR that turned things around. Yeah. What did he say to you to kind of bring you back around? Um, to paraphrase it, he said, don't let two careers end in one mistake. Mm. And then he said, just go forward and wrestle. Go forward and wrestle for two careers, but don't let two careers end. And... After sitting there thinking about that, I, I, I obviously went forward with it. Um, it was a tough thing to do, but I moved forward. And, and from that day forward, I've, I've never done the running power bomb ever again, ever. It's just been banned off my list of moves to do. Um, and I just continued my career. With the young wrestlers that you're mentoring and you're training with, what's the one piece of advice that you try to leave them with? Safety. Um, your opponent's giving you their body. They're working with you, not against you. And we all want to go home, provide for our family. So we should leave the ring in the same condition we entered it. And that's like the biggest thing is, is taking care of yourself and take care of your opponent. Are you still working as a CPA? No, I haven't done that in a long time. Um, Do you still file your own taxes? No, because, okay. no, no, because it's just, it's too, there's too many states, there's too many laws, there's too much to worry about. And it's easy to go, hey, brother, just do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we mentioned AEW earlier. Uh, obviously, you were a big part of the Attitude Era. This is maybe reviving some sort of competition here in the wrestling world. What's your take on what AEW can bring to the table? And I put AEW, same thing with MLW, same thing with Impact, um, same thing with Ring of Honor. I, I think now we're starting, it feels like we're about to enter a renaissance of professional wrestling. And with 
companies giving opportunities, giving options, giving places to work, different viewing aspects, it's it's going to put more eyes back on the business we all love. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's not a bad thing with more eyes on it, more opportunity, more guys getting work, more guys and girls uh, um, finding and creating a living in this business. It, that can't be bad, and people benefit from it are the fans. So to me, it's a win, win, win for everybody. Mm. You were retired before. You're obviously unretired now. I'm retired-ish. Like every wrestler, it's right? It's wrestling, dude. <laughs> There's only been one wrestler ever that's retired. That was Mark Merrow. He lost a little retirement match to Sable and never wrestled again. I love you, Mark. But you're the only guy who ever really retired. So what brought you out of retirement? Um, it's easy to show in like the dojo how to do things for your students it's a lot easier to show them in real life mm -hmm. how to do it and then take it back to the school and go, okay, here's what wrestling is. Here's what I know. I can tell you something all day long. Sometimes people don't want to listen to words. They want to see it. Sure. And so that's what kind of has me out there, just playing around. Um, and then I come out and help my friends in, in situations like this where, you know, Gangrel's, you know, Asylum is doing a show, so why not come out and help the boy? A lot of people are talking about what, AEW is going to mean against the ratings of WWE, but you worked for a long time in TNA. You worked behind the scenes for them. What does AEW mean for TNA and their ratings? I, I, I see it as the same boat. I think it's it's competition. It's going to make everybody raise their game. Okay. Um, you work harder when there's someone working against you. That's just the nature of life. So I think along across the board, it's going to create competition, which will create better content, better work rate, better viewership. Once again, the fans win because they get the benefit of all this mm. competition. So I, I think it's going to help across the board. You were a part of uh, Aces and Eights. Where do you think that that ranks in the all-time factions? That was kind of fun. I, I think given if it was given more longevity, would move up the ranks. Okay. Um, right now, because of its short run, although it was, it was like a meteoric rise and crash, um, <laughs> like, like a shooting star. <laughs> Um, I think if it was given another year or two, it could be up there because uh, people tend to like seem to enjoy it. So, and I had a lot of fun with it. I mean, people look at you know Nation, obviously look at DX. Is it up in those rankings? No, it's nowhere near Nation DX. That's that's like to me that's the like the pantheon of, of groups. You know, there's there's a Horseman, there's DX, there's there's uh, uh, what's that one Pauly Dangerous's group, Dangerous Alliance. You know, and then there's the nations in there. Yeah. And then you kind of go like down to another level and then another level down. <laughs> and there's kind of aces and eights because, you know, the heart foundation you got that whole, you know, what I'm saying. So there are there are levels to this and it, it takes a lot of the top and jump into that upper echelon. Of what groups. was the real reason for the dive? Uh, I just. I think the story got inconsistent and then. Guys moved on, or people saw into work rate, or whatever. A hundred different, hundred different reasons. Um, one thing I don't think is just given enough time to, to percolate. Hmm. And that's a big thing in the wrestling yeah, world. You need that thing. time. Yeah, you need that time. It's like it's like it's like baking. You can't bake a cake in five minutes. It takes you forty-five. Yeah. But if you pull it after twenty, it's still gonna be a cake, but it's not as good. Yeah. Are you watching a lot of wrestling these days? Um, I tend to watch a lot of the product. I like consuming product because. You can't speak on something that you're not paying attention to because mm. then you're just you're ignorant of what's going on if you're speaking blindly and not knowing what's going on. So I tend to watch. I'll watch WWE. I'll watch, um, I watch Impact. I'll watch Ring of Honor. Um, every night, I've, I've recently gotten MLW because um, Jacob Fatu is on there, a good friend of mine. So I got to see him work. Uh, and I'm looking forward to watching AEW. Is there something in the wrestling world right now that's maybe missing that, that could take things up another level? Dude, if I could figure that out, I'd be working for one of the major companies going, this is what we need to do to make a billion. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, I just think it has started with eyes on the product and we kind of figure it out from there. Yeah. And I think that's about what's going to happen in the next you know, four to six months with AEW now getting yeah. back on a major network. Um, that's what's going to happen over the next four to six months is eyes on the product. And then from there, you can kind of dial it in what's going to work and what's not. Well, I know you used to live down here in Florida. Mm -hmm. You obviously love the warm weather we yeah, have here. Well, yeah. you have very warm weather in Nevada, too. It's different. It's dry heat. Yeah, dry heat. I hate that dry heat. Uh, if WWE said, hey, come to Orlando, come be a coach at the PC, what would you say to that? I would entertain that because I love teaching. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then I love teaching in warm weather that's good on my body. <laughs> then it's a good tax-free state. <laughs> Nevada is not a tax-free state? It is, but it's, it's dry heat. <laughs> but it's a tax-free state. Yeah, but it's dry. And you got mountains. Ocean is better. Yeah, I've really missed mountains, though. Ocean is better. Well, this can be up for debate in the comments section. Well, yeah, you can tell uh, us. Down below, down yeah. below. There you go. Oceans or mountains? Yeah. Just give us a little feedback. Yeah. Just one word. Oceans or mountains? Ocean, mountains. There it is. Yeah. That's it. I yeah. guarantee you oceans are better. You're probably right. But still, I like mountains. Yeah, look, you can get seafood out of the ocean. What do you get out of the mountain? A goat. <laughs> get a goat. Deal of brown. I can do a goat. All right, Doc. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, great chat with D'Lo Brown. Thanks for watching this all the way to the end. If you don't already, uh, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on more interviews like this. And it's going to be a big week for interviews. I mean, we already dropped the Al Snow interview earlier in the week. And that was an interesting one because we did that on a Saturday at Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum show. We talked about the idea of the hardcore title coming back, about the idea of titles being defended 24-7. Then on Sunday at Money in the Bank, WWE announced they'd have a new title. Monday night on Raw, Mick Foley announces the 24-7 championship, which I think that we all kind of think is... Eh, eh. But the fact that Al and I were talking about this two days before it happened, it's kind of like, like fortune tellers or something like that. Or maybe we were like back to the future. I don't know. But I'm dropping this interview with D'Lo today because tomorrow we've got a big interview. And if you follow me on Instagram, you already know about this. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should. It's my name, at Chris Fanvleet, which is right there. Oh my gosh, you'll see stuff like this on my Instagram page. Uh, my new Subscribe and Conquer t-shirt. We'll get to that in just a second. But the interview tomorrow, it's a big one. It's with the American Nightmare. Yeah, we're going one-on-one -on -one with Cody, who happens to be in Miami. I'm not quite sure why he's in Miami. I guess we'll find out during the interview, but we're going to chat with Cody in Miami. If you have questions for Cody, you can drop those comments below when you're also dropping comments about whether you like the ocean or mountains better. And I get why you might say the ocean. Oceans are great. Mountains, though, you can hike. And there's really nowhere to hike here in Florida. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're doing the interview here with Cody in Miami, then flying to Vegas for Double or Nothing. I'm not flying with Cody, but we're both going to Vegas for Double or Nothing, which is going to be a real game changer in the wrestling world. And we've got a ton of interviews lined up there. Dustin Rhodes, MJF, Joey Janela, also chatting with Ryback, TJP, and a few other ones. So if you've watched these videos ever and you haven't subscribed, now is definitely the time to subscribe. So thanks for watching. If you have been a subscriber for the last seven, eight years, or maybe seven, eight months, seven, eight days, seven, eight weeks, whatever it happens to be, um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, yeah, this is the new Chris Van Vliet Subscribe and Conquer t-shirt. You subscribe, together we conquer. Uh, the link is below. They're available now at prowrestlingtees.com. And I feel like you're probably gonna see this shirt during the Cody interview tomorrow even though he'll be like wearing a suit, but you know, gotta represent.